in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. I'd like to begin by thanking Al Muntada for inviting me again. It's a great pleasure to be here. And thank you all for turning up. And also uh, thank you to uh, Professor Johns for accepting the invitation to debate me this evening. So um, I'll be arguing that atheism is irrational. Now, according to the Encyclopedia of Philosophy, an atheist is someone who maintains that God does not exist, i.e. that there's evidence against his existence. Now, with respect to what a rational belief is, that is uh, uh, the definition we will be using, which is agreed upon uh, myself and uh, Professor uh, Johns, is a belief that is proportionate to the evidence. So, my task this evening is to show that atheism is disproportionate to the evidence. Now, what I will also say is that it's come to light that Professor Johns is not actually an atheist. He is an agnostic. I'm not sure what happened uh, a few days going back, but no, nevertheless, my arguments will show that not only is atheism irrational, uh, but also that agnosticism, the idea that there isn't enough evidence either way, is also false. So, um, I have five arguments that I'd like to mention this evening, put forward this evening, and the first is atheism, atheism's inability to demonstrate uh, the impossibility of the existence of God. So, when we think about God, when we mention God, God is that which being no greater can be conceived. The highest being possible that can be conceived. And that being would be a necessary being, a being that must exist. Now, when we postulate the very possibility that a necessary being can exist, it means that this being can exist in a possible world. What do I mean by a possible world? It is how the world, as, as in reality, could have been otherwise. Now, if it is possible for a necessary being to exist in a possible world, then it is possible that it exists in all possible worlds. Why is that? Because uh, logical impossibilities and possi uh, possibilities do not differ from one world to another, i.e. A squared circle is not only impossible in this world, but also in all possible worlds. So if it is possible for a necessary being to exist, and a necessary being, being exists in all possible worlds, that means that he exists in the actual world. Therefore, God exists. So I can summarize the arguments as follows. It is possible that a necessary being can exist. Two, uh, if it is possible for a nece necessary being to exist, then it is possible that he exists in some possible world. Three, if a necessary being exists in some possible world, then, it is, then he exists in every possible world. If a necessary being exists in every possible world, then he must exist in the actual world. Therefore, God exists. I'm, I'm sure Professor Johnson has got a lot to say about that argument. 